I'm Anil Kumar and now we are exploring quadratic functions. This is a very important video and it can be utilized by students in grade 9, grade 10, 11 and even in grade 12. Now depending on at which level you are, for some of you the first part of the question may be relevant and not the second part. So if you're a grade 9 student, for example, or even grade 10 student, and you've just started with quadratic functions, you can come back to the later half once you have learned some more applications of quadratic functions. Let's begin. The question here is, how do you know that the following data can be represented by a quadratic function? Determine the equation of the functions. What I was talking about is, First part is, how do you know that the following data can be represented by a quadratic function? Now, that is by finite difference, correct? Now, finite difference is something which all of you will be interested or will be knowing about. So, the first part is basically finite difference. The second part is determine the equation of the function. Now, if you are a grade 9 student, then you don't have to get into that part, right? So skip that part. If you are a grade 10 student and you have already done few chapters on quadratic functions, then that is a very important question for you, okay? Now, let's begin by finding the finite difference. After all, what is finite difference? So what we are given here is a table of values where for x values, we have corresponding y values. As you notice, the x values are increasing by 1. And for them, we have corresponding y values. Finite difference is that for a constant difference of x value, we need to find the difference in y value. So those of you who have done lines, which all of you must have, uh, you kind of know about slope, right? So we say m is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, right? So it is kind of very similar to that, right? Now, since you can see these are different x values, their difference is 1. Minus 1 minus minus 2 is 1. So we are only considering the numerator part, which is y2 minus y1. So what we will do here is, we'll do 5 take away 3, that is y2 minus y1, right? And then we'll find 3 take away 5, minus 3 take away 3, minus 13 take away minus 3. And write down the results here. 5 take away 3 is 2, right? 3 take away 5 is minus 2, minus 3 take away minus 3 is minus 6, and minus 13 take away minus 3, so which becomes plus 3, will become minus 10, right? So those are the first differences. So first time when we do this, we call this as first difference, right? So let me write here, first difference. Now clearly, first difference is not constant, and therefore, we can say it is not linear, right? So we say it is not linear. Now, let us find the second difference. Now, to find the second difference, we repeat the process. So, now we will do minus 2 take away 2, minus 6 take away minus 2, minus 10 take away minus 6. So, when I do minus 2 take away minus 2, what do I get? I am doing minus 2 take away 2, so I get minus 4. Here, I am doing minus 6 take away minus 2, I again get minus 4, right? Now, in this case, I'm doing, so we get minus 2 take away 2 is minus 4, minus 6 take away minus 2 is minus 4, minus 10 take away minus 6 is again minus 4, right? So when you find these differences, we find that the second difference is constant, right? Is equal to minus 4. Do you see that? Now, since second difference is constant, we know that the equation is representing a quadratic function, right? So, now we can write down here that since 
Let me write second difference. is constant the data represents a quadratic function right so we have done the first part now let's look into determine the equation of the function how to find equation of this function right so that is the part which we'll do now now a quadratic function could be written as sometimes we write f of x but now i will use y equals to y equals to ax square plus bx plus c so that is general form of writing a quadratic function now we need to find the values of a, b and c to get the equation of the quadratic function which represents the given data. How do we find it? Now there are a couple of ways of doing it. Uh, the best way of course is that the second difference which is constant for us actually is related with a. So that could be a piece of information for quite, quite a few, right? So let me just write down this in big block. Here that is to say that second difference is constant that means a is equal to second constant difference divided by 2 in our case it is minus 4 so a is minus 4 divided by 2 which is equals to minus 2 in our case so we know a is minus 2 for us right so that leaves us with two parameters to find b and c right now those of you who do not know about this what they need to do is they need to take three different points and then solve for a b and c correct so what i will do actually is i'll provide you with a general general way of solving so what we will do is we'll consider three points 0 3 minus 1 5 and 1 3 are good points to select so if i write 0 for x and y for 3, I actually get value of c. Let me show you. So we are considering the point 0, 3. So let me highlight it here. First, we'll consider the point 0, 3 and write down one equation. So 3 is y value. So get 3 equals to 0 is x. So we get a times 0 plus b times 0 plus c. So that means that c is equals to 3 so we straight away get the value of c do you get the point right now we'll use two equations one with 1 th minus 3 the other one with minus 1 and 5 so if i write 1 and minus 3 what do i get y values minus 3 1 is x so i mean okay a times 1 square plus b times 1 now we know c is 3 so let us write 3 for it this equation get be written as let's simplify this a plus b plus 3 i mean 3 since c is 3 and now we can write a plus b is taking 3 to, to the other side minus 6 equals to a plus b correct so we get one more equation a plus b equals to minus 6 okay that is by utilizing the point 1 minus 3 so we utilize this point 1 minus 3 now what I will do here is take the third point since we have three unknowns we need three points to work with so let us use 1 and minus 1 and 5 so if I use the point minus 1 and 5 then in this equation I can write y as 5 so I get 5 equals to minus 1 as x so a times minus 1 square plus b times minus 1 plus c is 3 for us correct so we can now bring 3 on this side and say 5 minus 3 is equals to minus 1 square is 1 so we get a and minus b so we get a minus b equals to 5 minus 3 which is 2 now these are two linear kind of equations in two different variables a plus b as minus 6 let's call this as equation 2 for us and let's call this as equation 3 for us 
Solving these two equations together, we can find A and B. So if I add equation 2 and 3, what do I get? If I add them, I get 2A equals 2, minus 6 plus 2 is minus 4 or a is equals to minus 4 divided by 2 which is minus 2. Do you see that? So we get the same value of a. So we could have saved that much of work by using the formula. Right? I hope now you appreciate it. Correct? Now when we know a is minus 2 we can use this equation any one of these equations and find what b is. a minus b is 2. Right? So we can write minus 2 for a so we have 2 equals to minus 2 minus b or b is equals to minus 2 bring this to the side minus 4 so b is minus 4 now we know a b and c all three of them right so we know a equals to minus 2 b equals to minus 4 c equals to 3 substituting these values we can finally write down our quadratic equation which is y is equal to a is minus 2 x square b is minus 4 and c is 3 that is the equation which represents the given data right so it is a very intricate problem so it revolves around three points go through this video once again to understand the later half of this video I hope that is going to help you to find quadratic equations in a very general way. Thank you and all the best.